Hey everybody and welcome to Let's Look at Highborn and if you're the kind of person who's been watching my Skulls of the Shogun videos and you're thinking man I would love to play a game like this I just wish it was on PC well Highborn might actually be kind of exactly what you're looking for it's a weird kind of mix because on the one hand it's a really cool turn-based strategy game there's multiple kinds of units it requires a decent amount of strategy to succeed on the other hand it's an iOS and mobile port and immediately I hear the booze and hisses coming out of the audience but it's one of the better done ones uh, that has kind of made that crossover. It's not a Bumbledore, it's more like a Hero Academy maybe, shall we say. Uh, I'm gonna boot into uh, a campaign that I've already been running. I've played this game for about an hour and a half so far, and the missions are about, you know, Skulls of the Shogun XCOM encounter uh, in their length. So essentially, uh, what we're gonna do here, I'm just gonna take a look and I'll, I'll explain the basic interface that we have going on here. The game doesn't look so hot, I mean, remind, rem remember that it is a uh, a mobile port as we get going here, but it looks adequate, you know, everything is fairly uh, well displayed at the very least to make things clear, which is important for a strategy game. Uh, in this game, uh, we have a variety of unit types. This is our main hero here, Archie, who has uh, some spells that are going to be very important, like Holy Protection, which is going to increase our attack power and defenses for a round, as well as a uh, kind of like area of effect heal that's really important. I also just rescued Trillion, who is kind of like a stealth assassin class. Uh, who has uh, an AoE buff that doubles attack power for a, a number of units for one round. Uh, as well, we have a cleric here, or a monk. I'm probably going to call him a cleric many times. He has exactly the opposite hairline as me. Uh, wait a minute, that doesn't make any damn sense. In any case, uh, what we're going to do, our main goal for every mission is kind of like a series of objectives. We're going to try to conquer these houses uh, and these keeps, and what these are going to do is give us new units uh, and spawn units for us that we'll be able to use in our quest to eventually, you know, progress further, take over this town, go to these shrines, which are going to give us universal buffs, get these monoliths, which are going to give us new spells in true S Skulls of the Shogun style, like haunting a, a shrine. Uh, and eventually, I, I guess we're probably on this mission going to try to get up here, but I haven't beat this mission yet. Uh, maybe this is a boss or something that we have to fight over here. I'm not totally sure, but these are enemies. Anyway, let's just get started. Uh, it's a turn-based strategy game, but it has unlimited moves, unlike XCOM or uh, Skulls of the Shogun. Not unlimited range, but uh, it's not like you have five action points and you have to divide it up between your units. Every unit gets one action or more per turn, depending on the action that they take. So the first thing we're going to do is just have our uh, monk move up closer here. And can I actually have him get... No, I can't. So I'm going to move him backwards for a second. Uh, I'm going to have Trillion move up here and attack this shrine, which will actually give us the defender's idol which increases our unit's defenses, and there is going to be some dialogue here. You know, it's a little bit cutesy, I don't really find it like the dialogue, I don't find it that entertaining, and I usually just skip through it, but, you know, if you're the kind of person who absolutely needs a story in your strategy game, truly one does exist, and, you know, it, it, it's a little clever for its own good, I would say. Um, we're just going to back her up a little bit, and then I'm going to put Archie over here as well, uh, and then we're going to end our turn, because I don't want to get too, too close. The thing is, this keep that's down here, uh, that was the enemy turn, by the way, where they just didn't do anything. Uh, the keep that's down here actually will fire on us. So it's in my best interest not to... Uh, I'm just going to move this guy a little bit closer and then end my turn again. Uh, it's in my best interest not to uh, put myself within range of that. We can see the range of that by clicking on it, by the way. So I put myself just outside of range. Uh, so we're going to send Archie like down here right next to the keep. And then we're going to send uh, our Trillion down here. We're going to keep our Cleric out of there because that's going to be a big problem for us. If he gets hit once, he's going to die. Then we're going to have uh, Trillion cast her No Mercy spell, which doubles our attack power for one round. And then we're going to try to take out this keep, which should give us new units, uh, as well as stop it from firing at us, which is uh, very important. I mean, first things first, we are going to take some damage as we prepare to kill it. You can see its HP, by the way, in the bottom right corner. So now it belongs to us, and we've got this Militia unit. Uh, what we might want to do is just move the Militia up here, because right now it's in the Poisonous Swamp. This mission has been kind of bullshit so far. Anyway, let's move the Militia up here, if I can, please. I can move them here, I guess. Okay. Um, basically, if we stay in the Swamp, we'll take damage over time. There's also Flame Spouts, which are really annoying, and actually, if Trillion or Archie dies, as you might expect, the, uh, the run will be over. So we absolutely want to make sure that doesn't happen. Uh, Archie apparently cannot move on this turn. Our cleric can, and the swamp is not poisonous to him. What we're just going to do is move him down here, heal our unit, end our turn, and then proceed. It feels like I've been spending so much time playing turn-based strategy games recently. Uh, I, I like them a lot. I'm not necessarily complaining. I'm just saying. Uh, we are going to use Holy Protection here, which is a global buff to our defense and our damage. And then we're going to start attacking this town here. And you can see the keep is now on our side. Uh, this should allow us to take over the town. We get some more units. 
Gloin has to be a trademarked name. I'm not trying to out you here, Jet Set Games, developers of Highborn. I'm just saying. Uh, so our overall quest here, we're still very much in like the early phase of the game. This is only the third or fourth mission. Uh, but we're looking for our friend Enzo. He's about yay tall, pointy hat, wears a little too much brute cologne. Apparently he was here, and he went across the river to get some mushrooms for an omelet. Okay, I also hate mushrooms, Archie. Let's uh, move our monk over here. He can heal our militia. We'll end our turn, and then we'll get ready to proceed. And our next objective is going to be uh, to take over this town right here. But in the process, we will probably come across some enemies. That would be my guess, at least. All right, so I'm going to skip over a lot of this dialogue here. There's a Princess Bride reference, I think, in the flame spouts here. Uh, but anyway, there's flame spouts. We can avoid them. The teleporting sand, we can avoid that, too. What about the Worms of Remarkable Mass? Surprisingly, these Worms of Remarkable Mass may be indeed massive, uh, but they are usually one-hit killable. So it should be fairly easy for us to proceed, in any case. Also, Worms of Remarkable Mass, when you, when you turn that into an acronym, I guess it just turns into Worm, which is kind of cool. I'll admit, that's a little bit clever. More of that, please. Uh, now, let's move our Militia in as far as they can go. Usually I have Militia die, they're a pretty weak unit, uh, and we're just going to move basically all of our units in here. Oh, we can actually get Trillion close enough to take over this town, which might give us uh, another monk, yes. Uh, and I would love to have that guy just fall back a little bit because again if they get hit once they'll die But those monks are really really useful So let's end our turn for now the enemies might get close enough to attack But up oh, our militia has died because of the flame spouts. I kind of find that bullshit in fact trillion I failed this mission once because trillion died uh, Trillion being our female unit here. She just got killed by a flame spout basically out of nowhere and uh, I failed the mission which I found pretty shitty so we're gonna Probably try to keep her a little bit out of the, the line of fire. Uh, although she's right next to a flame spout right now, which is bad for business. Uh, but we can't move her, so you know what we're going to do is we're just going to put her in stealth for now. So at least this enemy probably won't be able to attack us. If she dies, I will consider that the bullest of shits. In the meantime, though, our dwarves again moving in, but uh, sadly the flame spout is nearby. We'll move Archie in a little bit, and we'll get our clerics in here. Uh, because I worry that on the next turn... Uh, they're gonna need to be used uh, drastically in order to save us, or used religiously, if you will. Get it? Because they're monks. Our dwarves just died. Apparently, if you're next to the flame spouts, um, yeah, she got hurt drastically there. Um, why am I using drastically so often? Stop trying to make drastically happen. Apparently, if you're next to the flame spout, you get hit by it, which kind of strikes me as a uh, a little bit cheap. This is the first mission. Or it's the my least favorite mission. I've played so far in the game, shall we say, uh, simply due to those flame spout, which I flame spouts, which I find super annoying. We will get continuous uh, militia supplies from this keep here, whenever one of our militia dies. However, they start in the swamp. I really should have gotten this monolith so I could get a spell. Maybe I should use the militia to just do that on the next turn. Um, yeah, by 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 attacking those monoliths, you get new spells that are actually like global use. So. Uh, if I pick up like a lightning spell for example, then all of my units will have the ability to use that lightning spell So Trillian's fairly close to death here we'll Probably end up just healing her with a uh, monk on the next turn and then moving onwards I found the game at times. Oh two times magical defense. Well, that doesn't really hurt me I don't do that much magical damage. I don't even know if I have any magical spells right now that actually do damage directly All right, so we're gonna send these guys into the poison swamp uh, We're gonna get this lightning spell. They're probably gonna die on the next turn. Oh, I didn't mean to end my turn Oh, that could be disastrous it might not be, but it could be. I really meant to heal uh, Trillian there. I don't think it's going to be disastrous. I think they're just not going to move too much, and then it's, it's going to be my turn. Uh, but that was a, a very poor course of events for me, for sure. All right, so now let's actually be smart about this. Uh, let's get this militia out of here, if I can. They are very nearly dead. Uh, but they're going to survive for now. I can send that cleric back to heal them. It might not be the worst idea, actually. We've got two clerics, so we can afford to do that. So let's keep this militia alive. Notice now that every unit has the lightning spell. Um, I am going to send Trillian up here to get this shrine, and then I'm going to have her back off. So we get a unit's movement range increase now. And again, he's just going to read the entire descriptive text there. Yada, yada, yada. Uh, then we're going to have her back off because these flame spouts are obviously going to be super annoying. And you know what? I'm just going to have Archie kind of fall in line here. We're going to take things very, very slow because I don't want to be... Kind of blindsided by flame spouts like I was on the last time. Missions, you know, we're going to try to play one whole mission here. They usually end up being fairly long. Um, I would say they're usually like 20 to 40 minutes in length. Kind of similar to, I guess, a Metal Gear Rising Revengeance uh, episode. 
And again, Trillion's gonna be fairly close to death here, but we can just have the Clara heal, and she should one-shot these units, yeah. Even without any buffs, uh, the enemy units tend to be one-shotable, at least at this point in the game, but there usually are boss fights, which is kind of rare for the genre, and, and I dig that. Uh, that we'll encounter a little bit later. So let's try to get this militia over here so we can have a little bit more of a, a reinforcement, shall we say. In the meantime, we'll just end our turn. No uh, shame in being patient, of course. I, there's times, I, I mentioned this a little bit, but the game feels a little bit uneven in terms of difficulty. It kind of feels like a turn-based strategy version of Spelunky in the sense that, you know, when things go badly, they go badly very quickly. It, it's not like XCOM, uh, necessarily where things go badly very slowly you can kind of feel like an ominous pull towards disaster uh, In this it's it's much more like oh surprise. I'm dead So we'll just use trillion to get a, a free kill on these worms here. There is like no experience or anything like that uh, And I'm not quite sure where we're supposed to be going. I'm just gonna back up and uh, take a look Let's try to go to this monolith down here in the bottom right the thing is first things first Let's get our militia as far up as they can go. They will die very very quickly uh, and we still have two clerics, which is good. So we're gonna move uh, Archie up a little bit here. We're gonna move Trillion up a little bit. The militia are stuck where they are. We're gonna move the monk up here, remember, or the monk, number one monk anyway, up here. And then we're gonna keep our other monk around that uh, militia, because otherwise he's, you know, possibly gonna die. Okay, now this is an interesting situation for us. I need to get through here, but I also want to make sure that my, uh, the, you know, two most powerful units here don't die. Let's send uh, the militia up here for now. And then we're gonna end the turn. They can come to us if they want to land on these shifting sands and possibly be killed. That's okay by me. And the reason I wanted all of my units to be here is because now I could possibly, if I take a look at- Oh man, my movement's not as far as I thought it would be. Um... We could possibly make some big things happen here. Here's what I'm thinking. Uh, we, we use the No Mercy spell. This could be total disa disaster, by the way, but uh, this should buff the three of us, so now we have double damage. Then you move Trillion in here, and in coming in here, she should be able to one-shot these skeletons. Excellent. And then I can put her into stealth mode, so she should be invulnerable for this turn at least. Now the real question is, how far in can Archie get? And the answer is not really far enough, but if I move him in close anyway, I... Uh, the dwarves must be nearby. Is there a town or something around here? Looks like there's a, a dock. I'm not sure if that's actually uh, important. Maybe I can use the lightning spell? No, I'm not in range. Um, what I will do is cast Holy Protection, which will give us increased uh, defense. Not much, but a little bit of increased defense. And then I'll move my militia up, and then I'll move my clerics up. I don't think Archie's gonna die here. He could. It's not unreasonable to assume that he might, uh, but... I don't think he's gonna die here. If he dies, we'll just boot into an earlier mission and we'll do that instead to kind of demonstrate what up with that. See, he, he's pretty hardy with respect to his defense, not just because of that buff, uh, but also because of that shrine that we got earlier and because of his natural kind of tankiness. So he took a little bit of damage, but he one-shot the enemy. Magical Ward has been cast, which gives uh, increased magical defense, which doesn't really bother me because I don't have magical units right now. Uh, if this thing wants to attack me, so be it. We'll still kill it in one hit. So everything's good, we've made a little bit of progress. Usually, by using a reasonable modicum of strategy here, uh, uh, things are fairly easy to uh, succeed with. But bosses can sometimes turn that on its head. The boss fights can be fairly difficult. Alright, looks like that port leads deeper into the swamp. Maybe we should ride it and see where it goes. First things first, let's go uh, to this monolith. We'll attack that and we'll get a Magical Ward, which doubles our magical defense. Fantastic. We'll move our Militia in here. We will then move our cleric in here. Uh, do we have another? We have another cleric just kind of chilling here, which is really bad for us. Uh, but if I just kind of move him over here, maybe he won't be attacked on the next turn. And if he is, whatever. Shit happens sometimes. Let's get this guy healed up. And um, I don't know. Do we really want to go to this port? I think it's going to carry us across here, which is something that we might not want to do. Immediately, maybe we want to wait until the next turn until everybody's in here. For now, we're in a very good position, though. And you notice that- uh, oh, I- Wow, that kind of came out of nowhere. That could be terrible. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? Notice how I haven't been talking too much about how I feel about the overall game. Whenever that happens in a Let's Look At, that's a sign that I'm playing a pretty good game. This is available on Steam. Uh, it's ten bucks. Which might strike you, you know, as a little bit rich for a, a, a mobile port, but, you know, it's a game that seems ten bucks worthy, in my opinion. We're just gonna stand here for now, and uh, on the next turn, we'll, we'll go over on that port. 
Since I lost all my clerics, that's pretty shitty. I should check and see if there's new militia, by the way. The militia died in one hit, which, you know, as usual, makes them kind of garbage. Let's uh, just quickly see if we do have... Oh, we have another cleric left back there. I guess when these units die, they always respawn. Uh, so let's just move this cleric forward. That militia is going to be all on his own. Which is reasonable, because this cleric is super important for us. So to clear the path for the cleric, we should indeed take one more turn. Uh, to just absolutely destroy everybody coming through this way. Oh, are you kidding me? He didn't die. That's not good. Can we get uh, into a position where we can attack him here? Maybe with the lightning spell? No, alright. Uh, in that case, we'll just end our turn and hope that nothing absolutely horrible happens. Roots of Evil was a pretty nasty spell, man. Meteor Strike doesn't really bother me as much. But yeah, it, in terms of my impressions of this game, let's let's talk about a hierarchy. It's a little bit of an unfair hierarchy. Uh, but between this, XCOM, and uh, Skulls of the Shogun, I think this is the worst of the three. And I don't even mean that in a negative way. Uh, but, you know, it's also the cheapest of the three. And it's the most readily available. Uh, well, I guess XCOM is also on basically every platform. But Skulls of the Shogun, of course, is only available on uh, Xbox Live Arcade and Windows 8 devices, I believe. So, uh, you know, it, it's the worst of the three. It's still totally competent. And if you've got a really uh, big itch for turn-based strategy, I think you could find yourself having a lot of fun with this. Uh, you know what? Let's shit or get off the pot here. Start taking ourselves over and fighting Icky. Another piece of walking meat your rotting corpse will add to the wonder of my swamp. Ah, my worst nightmare. A walking, talking, hostile, evil mushroom. Though that is kind of redundant. All mushrooms are evil. Okay. So, they're having some dialogue here. That guy wants a meat lover's pizza, which pretty much sums up, you know, me as well. Uh, every day and every moment of my life, we have these two units here. Here's what we're gonna do. Obviously, we want to kill this boss on the first turn, if possible. Sadly, they can't really move anywhere at all. Uh, what if I move him, her here, then she can do some attacking. But can he do any attacking here? The answer is no. Okay. But what I am gonna do is have her do, uh, the double attack spell. So hopefully I can kill the boss on this turn. I don't think it's gonna be possible. But it might. I'm also going to have him do his buff that gives everybody increased defense. And I'm hoping these flame jets don't actually kill us here. They might cause us a lot of problems. Uh, so let's just have her attack. Oh, she almost killed it. You're so close and then you got hurt, you fool. Um, okay, that's okay because we can still do our heal here. I don't want to accidentally heal the enemy. Uh, could we then have her just like leave? Can you just get on this boat and go back? Archie can. That's probably a good idea. Uh, and we could have her turn into stealth, which, uh, let's back it up here for a second. Uh, we'll have her double magical defense for one round, just on herself. Because if she dies, it's game over. This is not Fire Emblem, the story does not continue moving onwards. Then we'll have her stealth as well. So we basically cast every single buff that we have. Uh, and then, oh, she could also leave here, I guess. Anyway, that should guarantee your survival for one turn. And then on the next turn, we'll just hop over there again and then do some more damage again. Did, uh, did the thing die? I guess the thing did die uh, in the flame jets. Okay. So, uh, they are telling us that Enzo, who is somebody that I've never seen so far, went off with that wannabe chef folio, something about a breakfast omelette. Okay. So, wait, we already... Yeah, we've gone through this dialogue. Oh, we win! That was the shortest mission I've ever seen so far, and I guess we got an achievement. Uh, for not doing things the normal way cool by me uh, again makes for kind of a shorter let's look at but there's not too much more to show you know every mission has been fairly similar with respect to its basic mechanics I don't know how long the game is Enzo oh man you look like how macho man Randy Savage might look if he was still alive uh, I'm just gonna skip through the dialogue here and take us back to the main menu if possible well, I can take us... Yeah, there we go. Well, the game actually crashed as we were switching resolutions. That's the first time that's actually happened to me, so I'm not going to hold that against the game. Uh, but in any case, I wanted to come back here just to explain my overall impressions of the game and how you can find it. As always, there will be a link in the video description to check out the game on Steam. I believe it is $7.50 for its opening week sale, but it's going to be $10 overall, if I remember correctly. I think I paid $7.50 for it anyway. And you know what? Totally competent turn-based strategy game. It's not going to reinvent the wheel. It's not as good or as deep as XCOM, and I find it, you know, with its writing and even its basic mechanics are not as sharp as Skulls of the Shogun, but if you don't have access to either of those games, uh, Highborn could be a reasonably good uh, investment for you. I think you can get a lot of time out of this. Like I said, two hours so far, and I'm only on like the fourth or the fifth mission, uh, which seems like a pretty good value to me, just in terms of longevity. 
And, you know, overall, just a, a mild thumbs up for this game. I, I never expect to like mobile ports, because perhaps incorrectly, I always assume that they're going to be shallow. But this is a game that I might consider checking out on my mobile device as well. Seems like it could be a reasonably good diversion, uh, apart from Wikipedia, which I now use. Uh, when I'm on the bus or something. But again, in any case, thank you guys for watching. Check out the link in the video description if you want to see Highborn on Steam. And in any case, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.